well, the one thing that Myanmar's military doesn't want the outside world to know exactly how brutal and awful they are to people within the country. And they want to hide their brutality from other parts of the country. So they want to not have people living in Yangon really understanding what they're doing in uh, Rakhine State to the Rohingya or what they're doing in Shan State or in, in, in Kachin State. So it follows a pattern of, of trying to, to hide the brutality of the military and hide the mistreatment of, of people from other parts of the country because they know that people within Myanmar do not want to stand for the sorts of atrocity crimes that the military has been I inflicting upon people and they want to hide it as much as they can. And that's why the book's been banned. Uh, that, that's why they've closed down the bookshop that made the book available. And that's why they made clear in state media uh, that the book had been banned. They want to send a signal to people that, that talking about these issues, the genocide of the, of the Rohingya undertaken uh, over, over many years, but, but, but um, carried out with, with some serious um, brutality in 2017, that they do not want people knowing about what's happened to the Rohingya. They want to make clear that they don't want people within the country talking about that. The banning is certainly uh, the continuation of a pattern of uh, repressing freedom of expression. That, that, that's been widespread. Whenever the military takes power within Myanmar, they try and shut down freedom of expression. What's interesting with this specific ban is that they didn't name other books about the Rohingya. And there are other books that are available about the Rohingya that have been in the market for some years that, that haven't been specifically named. And that suggests to me that they've taken a very keen interest in this one. And I think the reason is that it addresses the history and the history that demonstrates that the Rohingya are indigenous to Myanmar. And I think that's what makes the military nervous. The historical record is something that I really do delve into in the book. Done a lot of archival research in, in, in the British archives, so pre-colonial British archives, to outline and just make clear what the Rohingya's history are uh, within Myanmar. And I think that's something that the military does not want people within the country having a, a, a broader understanding of. But it does continue a pattern of trying to limit freedom of expression. I mean, it, it, banning books has a, has a pretty chilling effect upon freedom of expression generally. It means that people will think carefully before they pick up a book or talk about a book. That's a problem when you if you want to try and build a democratic society. Now, they don't, the, the military don't want to build a democratic society. They want to build a society where they get to determine what people read. And ultimately, what they want to try and determine what people think. But I think the thing is that they can ban books, but of course, they, they can't ban the truth. I mean, the truth will always find a way to make itself known to people. And people in Myanmar will increasingly talk about what's gone on with the, what, what's gone on with their history. And they will, I think, increasingly talk about uh, the mistreatment that the Rohingya have, have endured.